Here we will demonstrate a simple scenario where we quickly set up a CI CD project on AWS. We'll use CodeStar for this video. There are other alternatives available from Google Cloud Provider and HP. To begin, we'll click on Create New Project. From the left nav bar, we can filter the templates to our choosing. For demonstration purposes, I've selected Node.js web applications using AWS Elastic Beanstalk. This is just one of the many options available. We'll choose Express as well. On this screen, we enter the basic project details and select a repository host. We'll stick with AWS for this video. On the following screen, we can review the project details and AWS lets us know that the project will include an AWS code pipeline connected with tools for sourcing, building, testing, deploying, and monitoring. This will aid in our CI CD process. Here we select an EC2 key pair to encrypt the EC2 being used for this project. I've already prepared one for this video to speed things up. On this page, we can find instructions for connecting various IDEs to our project and cloning the repository. Let's take a quick look at an example for Eclipse. Great, now our project is finalizing and will be ready to go, all in under two minutes. Now let's take a look at our CodeStar project once it is finished setting up. We have tabs for all of our options, including IDE configuration, viewing and managing the generated code pipeline, controlling team access, and more. Let's take a look at the pipeline. We have steps for getting the source code from code commit, building the source using code build, and then deploying the code to our Elastic Beanstalk environment using cloud formation. Finally, let's take a look at the repository that was created in code commit. This is one of the many example projects AWS provides to make starting a new project a breeze. Now let's walk through another example, but this time we'll leverage the popular automation server Jenkins. We have already configured a Jenkins job for our demonstration purposes. Let's start by examining it. You'll see that we've set up a pipeline for checking out source code, installing tools and dependencies, running tests, building, and deploying to our target environment. Now let's explore the configuration. Starting at the top, you can enter a job description. We left this blank for the demo. Next, we'll set up the build trigger. Here we configure Jenkins to check the source code repository every five minutes for any changes. We can see the next scheduled check displayed here. There are many alternative trigger options. For example, you could use the hook option for triggering on each code commit. We'll skip advanced project options for now and look at the Jenkins pipeline. Here we have configured Jenkins to pull from our Sprint branch on our AWS code commit repository. Within our Sprint branch, we are targeting our pipeline config file called the Jenkins file. This file defines all the details on how the pipeline actually operates. It is important to maintain this via your source control to ensure proper pipeline management and versioning. So let's open up code commit and explore this configuration defined within the Jenkins file. Starting at the top, we say that we can use any agent here. And since this is a Node.js project, we include a Node.js node. Now we enter our pipeline stages. The stages run in sequence, so if anything breaks in one of the stages, the script will not proceed to the next one. The first stage is to install the necessary dependencies required to execute our tests. Typically here, we'd run npm install. Once the dependencies are installed, we enter the next stage and begin executing our tests. In this example, our npm tests command will discover and execute all of the unit tests located in our test directory. We will of course want to know if there are any issues with these tests and if the tests have failed, which one and why. So we use this post test utility to collect our test results and test artifacts. 
As mentioned earlier, if any breaks occur, the script will not proceed to the next stage. So if no breaks have occurred, the script will execute the build process next, as seen here with the npm run script command. And finally, once building is complete, the next stage is where you will execute the deployment process and deliver your code to the targeted environment. If we navigate back to Jenkins, we can examine the output for one of these jobs. You'll see we have detailed information from each stage of the execution. First, we have code checkout details for pulling the latest code. Then we have logs for installing our tooling and dependencies, which is where you can see the npm install command from earlier. Once dependencies are installed, we see a large amount of details for all of our unit tests, including pass-fail flags for each test. You can also see some warning flags here. Below this, the test results are captured and the build command is executed. Having a setup like this is pretty nice because you can see your pass-fail status from each execution. While we configure this one to check every five minutes, you can always click Build Now to execute on demand. So there you have it, another way to configure your CI CD pipeline, this time using Jenkins. Time for continuous testing and reporting. As an automation tool, you can really set up Jenkins to run whatever you want. So here we have configured Jenkins to continuously execute tests across a set of our environments. You see that we have two tests, a smoke test in our prod environment and an end-to-end -end test in our dev environment. From a results perspective, you can see on this dashboard that there are currently some issues with our end-to-end -end test, hence the cloudy storm, while our smoke test looks okay, a nice sunny sky. Let's start by looking at our smoke test first. We pull the configuration from our AWS code commit and set the job to run every two hours or if there are any code changes. For more info on build triggers and pulling configs from source control, you can go back and watch our previous Jenkins tutorial. Next, we use Docker to execute our Catalan tests. More on this later. And finally, we configure Jenkins to push success and fail notifications to our Slack channel. One really cool Jenkins feature is the results analyzer. Here you can view the visualized results of your test executions. Thankfully, there are currently no issues with our prod environment. This hasn't always been the case, and if we back out one level, you can see that at some point prod had some issues and were quickly resolved. It's good info to have. Now let's look at a more complex testing setup on our dev environment. These tests check app functionality across many different roles. As you can see based on the blue, the amount of tests we have has increased over time. We are currently approaching almost 70 test cases on each run. Since this set of tests are executed on the dev environment, it's not always going to be successful, either due to the automation script or changes to the dev environment itself. For example, in this section here, there was a problem with the environment, causing a large number of failures. Now let's dig into the configuration. Similarly to before, we pull from our AWS repo and set it to run every hour or if any changes are committed to source code. Again, we use Docker to run our Catalan Studio tests. In this case, we run the tests on Chrome browser inside the Docker container. Docker is another topic that we won't get into now, but stay tuned to Qualitics for another tutorial. And there you have it. We have a set of tests continuously executing on both our dev and prod environments and are pushing notifications to our Slack channel as seen here.